To stop a planet-eating god, a group of alien robots must decide whether to save Earth or return to their homeworld. A Terracon named Scourge arrives at the Maximal's homeworld. His army of Predacon Scorpions chase after the Maximal leader, Apelink, who holds the transwarp key. Optimus Primal destroys the Predacon on his tail just before Airazor, Cheetor, and Rhinox arrive. Apelink hands the key to Primal, ordering him and the rest to flee with it while he holds off Scourge. Their leader reminds them that if Unicron gets the key, he'll be able to open a portal through time and space and destroy worlds. With that, the others flee while Apelink faces Scourge. However, the henchman quickly stabs him and blasts his shoulder. He then removes the maximal insignia from Apelink and adds it to his trophies. Just then, a ship is ejected into space, carrying the maximals, who swear an oath to protect the key no matter what. When Scourge returns to his master, the planet-sized god Unicron commands him to search the universe for the transwarp key. Afterward, Unicron consumes the maximal's planet. Centuries later, on Earth, Noah lives with his mother, Brianna, and his brother, Chris. After Brianna goes to work, Noah notices that Chris struggles to hold a fork since his hand is swollen due to a sickle cell disease. At a museum, Elena arrives and her boss, Jillian, immediately orders her to authenticate an art collection for the police. After the intern points out the details to prove that they're fake, Jillian goes to the officers and repeats what Elena told her, taking credit for her work. Elena then notices a falcon statue among the collection, where she spots an engraving, unaware that it's the maximal insignia. Jillian explains that the art collector claimed that the piece was found in Sudan, likely a statue of Horus. The intern points out that the emblem isn't hieroglyphic, but her boss doesn't care since authenticating it might boost her career. The woman then takes it to the laboratory, but Elena peeks in to copy the symbols on the statue. At the hospital, the administrator reminds Noah that they're three months behind their bill, so they can't continue treating Chris. With no choice, the brothers leave. To help out, Noah goes to his job interview, only to discover that it's been cancelled. He spots the head of security, Mr. Bishop, so he goes to him, reminding him that he promised Noah the job. However, Bishop talked to the man's former commanding officer, who claimed that he was unreliable since his head was always somewhere else. Noah defends that he was just worried for his sick brother, but Bishop is convinced that he isn't a team player. Desperate to provide for his brother, Noah later approaches his friend and local thug, Reek. That evening, Noah is visibly nervous as he and Reek are parked outside a hotel. Reek assures him that since rich people feel good when donating to the poor, they're doing them a favor. At the museum, Elena shares her findings about the falcon statue with Jillian. She's sure it isn't Horus, given that the Nubians hadn't had contact with the Egyptians when the artifact was supposedly made. Instead, she thinks it's an entirely different god. Again, Jillian doesn't care and just orders her to have her jacket pressed. However, her ID card is still attached to her jacket, giving Elena an idea. While Noah sneaks into the hotel's parking lot, Elena uses Jillian's ID to enter the laboratory. Noah sets his eyes on a Porsche that's reportedly been there for weeks, not noticing the strange logo on the hood. He Jimmy the car's lock, but it suddenly locks on its own. Still, he tries again and gets into the driver's seat. Meanwhile, Elena analyzes the Falcon statue when it cracks, revealing the transwarp key inside. The key emits an energy surge, catching the attention of Optimus Prime, the leader of the Autobots. He calls out to his team, announcing that they found a way home. His voice transmits into the car where Noah is, so the scared man tries to leave. However, the car locks by itself and starts driving away, taking Noah with it. The car speeding catches the police's attention, so the the vehicle maneuvers to lose them. More police cars arrive, so Noah, who refuses to be arrested, instructs the vehicle to take the bridge. To his surprise, the car transforms to turn around and emits holographs to multiply, confusing the officers and ensuring their escape. Afterward, the car stops at a warehouse where it transforms into the Autobot Mirage. This scares Noah, so he grabs a metal pipe, but Mirage presents his blaster to make him surrender. When the man doesn't, the Autobot commences bravery. Just then, Prime arrives with Bumblebee and RC. The leader scolds Mirage for bringing a human, but he defends that Noah was in the car when Prime called. RC scans Noah and reports that he was a military private specializing in electronics. Wanting to get onto business instead, Prime puts the human away. RC notes that the energy surge that Key transmitted is undetectable to humans. Prime explains that the transwarp key was a lost artifact that could open space-time portals to energon-rich planets like Cybertron, their home. The Autobots have been stranded on Earth for seven years, but now they have a way back home. RC reports that the key is in a museum on Ellis Island. Island, but they can't just grab it without being discovered. Mirage suggests having Noah steal it, but Prime and the human refuse. To convince him, Mirage offers to let Noah sell him as a luxury vehicle, and once he's paid, he'll just escape. Desperate, the man agrees. While Elena continues investigating the key, Mirage drives Noah to the museum. He shares that Prime is just angry since he blames himself for getting them stuck there. They were just supposed to stop on Earth to regroup before returning to the war at their home. When they reach the museum, Mirage transforms into a garbage collector truck 
to let them pass through the gate. During this, the Autobots watch from a distance, though Prime doesn't trust Noah or any human since they only protect each other. While they're distracted, Scourge and two Terracons, Nightbird and Battletrap arrive. Noah soon heads to the building, but the power goes out before he can get inside. Startled, Elena, who's still in the laboratory, hurries to leave. As she races to the door, Noah enters. Immediately, he recognizes the key in her hands. Deducing that he's there to steal, Elena attempts to run, but something explodes outside. When the two check, they find Scourge and his team. Seeing them, Scourge orders his insectoids called Freezers to bring him the key. As the Terracons attack, the Autobots arrive, thus starting a battle. While RC and Bumblebee team up against Battle Trap, Mirage attempts to shoot at Nightbird, who flies around. Prime battles against Scourge, though he's surprised that the enemy matches his strength. Elena and Noah rush to the fire escape, but the Freezers catch up before they can exit. When one jumps to attack the woman, Noah slams a lamp against it. The two make it outside, but Battle Trap spots them just as Nightbird lifts Mirage into the air and drops him. He falls directly before the humans, so he lets them run just as the Freezers escape from the museum. However, Nightbird tosses a bomb at the humans, throwing them off and making them drop the key. RC goes to get it, but Battle Trap slams a car at her. Meanwhile, Bumblebee helps Prime keep Scourge at bay. However, the enemy punches Bumblebee into the museum and knocks Prime down. During this, Nightbird grabs the key. Before Scourge can kill their leader, Bumblebee races back to them, so the Terracorn stabs him instead. Bumblebee looks to Prime before Scourge sends a blast through his body, deactivating him. The creature then removes his insignia before tossing his body aside. Suddenly, Air Razor arrives, so the Terracon leaves since they've retrieved what they needed. The Autobots regroup, stunned to see Bumblebee down. However, the police approach the museum, so they escape. At an abandoned shipping port, Prime lets his anger out, guilty of Bumblebee's demise. Mirage questions who Air Razor is, so she explains that she's a Maximal who fled their planet on the day it was destroyed. She adds that Scourge and the others are Terracons who serve the hungry god, Unicron. Unicron infuses his servants with dark energy to make them invincible, hence why they outmatch the Autobots. Prime fears that Unicron will use the key to consume all planets in the universe, but Air Razor reveals that Scourge didn't get the whole key. During this, Scourge returns to Unicron, only for his master to punish him as the artifact he has is only half of the key. At the port, Air Razor explains that she and her companion split the key into two before going their separate ways. However, she doesn't know where the second half is, nor if her companions are still alive. Elena shares that she found documentation of the key symbols in the Inca Temple of the Sun in Peru. Since the human located it, RC warns them that the Terracons will be able to as well. Prime suggests finding Scourge to take his other half of the key, but Noah points out that the Terracon just defeated them, and if Unicron gets the key, Earth will be endangered. With that, he demands to join them, refusing to rely his planet's fate on Prime, who couldn't even protect his home. Thinking that they can save their worlds, Elena also volunteers. After this, Noah returns home and finds his brother still awake. As he tucks him to bed, Mirage peeks into their window curiously. Noah uses the chance to tell his brother that he'll be gone for a while. But Mirage slips and accidentally activates his lights, catching Chris's attention. Noah tries to dismiss this, and when his brother checks, Mirage turns back into a car. Not fooled by this, Chris throws a can at him. So Mirage turns to his robot form to scold the kid. Noah assures his brother that the alien is his friend, but he must go with him to save the world. Understanding that he'll be in danger, Chris orders Mirage to watch out for his brother. The crew regroups in the morning and meets their ride, Stratosphere, an older Autobot who turns into a cargo plane. During the ride, Noah discreetly tells Elena that he wants to destroy the key in Peru to ensure that Unicron will never get to it. She reminds him that the Autobots need it, but he argues that they must watch out for their planet. Soon, they land in Peru, where they meet up with Wheeljack, who has already detected energy readings around the Santo Domingo church, which was built on top of the Inca temple. However, the ongoing festival in the city will make it difficult for them to get inside. Noah volunteers himself and Elena to blend with the crowd and fetch the key. Prime admits that this is their only option, so Mirage tosses Noah a device to help him out. The humans soon head into the church, unaware that the Terracons have arrived outside the city. Knowing that the humans are on their way to the key, Scourge releases his freezers to follow them. Noah and Elena arrive at the empty church and begin searching the courtyard. The researcher notices a floor engraving that matches the maximal symbol, but it's misaligned, so she corrects it. When she does, they hear something moving, so the humans begin realigning all the engravings, which opens the floor leading to an underground passage. They descend the passage and discover a large catacomb where the old temple is. Inside, they find a stone chest with the maximal symbol, but when they open it, it's empty. Instead, Elena finds symbols similar to those on the statue from the museum. However, a freezer appears behind her, so the 
to run. Noah calls for help through Mirage's device, so the Autobots rush to the temple, but the Terracons follow them. When the humans get cornered, Noah accidentally activates a blaster from Mirage's device, killing one of the freezers. Driven to avenge Bumblebee, Prime faces Scourge while the rest continue heading to the humans. However, Air Razor intervenes by blasting the bridge above the two, halting their battle. Because of this, Scourge fires something on the Maximal, which starts to corrupt their wings. Meanwhile, the humans reach an exit leading to the forest, where they face Primal. The other Autobots and Maximals arrive, suspicious of each other, until Air Razor finds them, stunned that her team is still alive. When she introduces her team, Prime is surprised to learn Primal's name. So, the Maximal explains that he was named after him, since they deem him as the legendary warrior of Cybertron. Air Razor warns that Scourge has half of the key, so they must recover the second one. Primal reveals that they moved it to keep it safe. As he leads them to its location, Mirage reveals to Noah that his brother gave him their radio so he can keep tabs on them. They soon arrive at a small tribe where the people have accepted the Maximals as part of them. Because of this, they entrusted them with the second half of the key. Seeing this, Prime decides to activate its beacon to lure Scourge, but Primal refuses to put Earth at risk. Later, Primal admits to Air Razor that his hero isn't what he imagined, given that Prime was willing to endanger Earth. Air Razor defends that the Autobot has lost so much. With this in mind, Primal goes to the Autobot, unaware that something is happening to Air Razor. That evening, Primal reveals that the valley is rich with Energon, which could revive Bumblebee. However, they don't have enough power to ignite it. The Maximal also notices how Prime distrusts humans, so he assures him that they're worth saving since he's spent centuries with them. During this, Elena wonders if there's another way to save both planets without destroying the key. Noah insists that they can't risk their home, so the woman compares him to Prime, as the leader is just trying to protect his family like what he's doing. The next day, Elena discovers that Air Razor's corruption has taken over her body and mind. She moves to attack, so Prime shields Elena and aims to shoot the fleeing Maximal. However, Primal stops him. Knowing that the Terracons have found them, the aliens prepare to fight while Primal entrusts the key to Noah. Just then, Nightbird attacks, so the humans rush away. They reach a river, and Noah decides to destroy the key using Mirage's device. However, Prime sees them and begs him not to, since their homes will be lost if they can't return. After much thought, Noah lowers the device, but Air Razor swoops in and takes Elena and the key. Primal chases after them, only to find that Air Razor has surrendered the key to Scourge. Victorious, the leader orders the corrupted Maximal to kill her leader while he leaves. Air Razor regains consciousness long enough to remind Primal of their oath. She then aims to kill Elena, forcing her leader to tackle her down. The two battle it out, and when Primal captures her, Air Razor solemnly assures him that it's okay. With no choice, the leader crushes her, thus killing Air Razor. On top of a volcano, Scourge completes the key and summons a tower to create a portal for Unicron. Seeing this, Prime apologizes to Noah for dooming his planet, admitting that they should have been fighting for both their planets together. With that, Noah decides that the fight isn't over. He gathers the crew, encouraging them to stop Unicron. Primal thinks it's too late since the key has been activated. Its energy is greater than a supernova, so if they interrupt it, it'll explode. It can be safely stopped using a code, but it was split along with the key, and half of it died with Air Razor. Hearing this, Elena points out that she copied the markings on the statue from the other key, and she thinks it's the code. With this chance, Primal instructs the humans to enter a tunnel under the bridge to reach the tower and input the code. While they do this, the others will lure the Terracons to a battle to distract them. Soon, the Terracons see the Autobots and Maximals nearby, so Scourge sends Battle Trap, Nightbird, and an army of Freezers at them while he guards the bridge. Seeing this, Mirage leads the humans to the tunnel and volunteers to distract Scourge for them. Mirage appears on the bridge and creates holograms to confuse Scourge. However, the Terracon hits the real Mirage, making him drop just above the humans. This leads to Scourge discovering them, so he grabs Noah while Elena runs to the key. Mirage shoots Scourge to save Noah, but the Terracon kicks him away. When Scourge aims to shoot Noah again, Mirage uses himself as a shield to protect the human. The man cries as he watches the Autobot get destroyed. Afterward, Scourge sends a freezer to hunt Elena. The woman reaches the end of the tunnel but faces the volcano's mouth, so she begins climbing toward the key. While Noah is trapped under Mirage's body, Chris talks to him from the radio on the robot's arm. He regretfully tells his brother that the Autobot is gone and that they're losing the battle. Chris encourages him to keep going, insisting that he's the strongest man he's known. Suddenly, Mirage interrupts them revealing that he has survived. However, he's too weak to move independently, so he transforms his body into an exosuit for Noah to continue fighting. Using the Autobot's weapons, Noah faces Scourge, and Prime arrives to assist him. As the two fight Scourge, Elena is close to the key when a freezer attacks her. Luckily, she snaps a metal piece and stabs the creature with it. The tower releases an energy surge to continue opening the portal, and this activates the energon around the area, including the one where Bumblebee bodies lies. Noah manages to bring Scourge to his knees, allowing Prime to strike him. However, Nightbird
Bird takes the human, so Primal sends a spear to strike the Terracon, freeing Noah. Freezer swarm Prime while Nightbird corners Noah. Fortunately, Stratosphere arrives and sends in a revived Bumblebee, who eliminates multiple Freezers in his way. Nightbird attacks him while Scourge shoots, so Bumblebee uses the Terracon to block the blasts. He then takes a broken piece from Nightbird and stabs her with it, defeating her before they can land. With Elena close to the key, Prime orders his team to guard her. Bumblebee transforms into a car to take Noah back, killing more Freezers along the way. During this, Prime manages to pin Scourge back, so the Terracon requests reinforcement from his master. Unicron sends a troop of Predacon Scorpions to keep the Autobots and Maximals busy. Noah and Bumblebee soon reach the bridge, just as Elena activates the key's control panel. Unicron begins entering the portal, while Prime stabs Scourge and pushes him into magma. Elena finally inputs the code, but before she can close the portal, Scourge pushes Prime back and shoots the woman. Noah pulls her out of the way, while Prime slices off Scourge's arm and beheads him, finally ending the Terracon leader and reclaiming Bumblebee's insignia. However, Scourge's blast destroyed the control panel, so Elena can't stop the portal anymore. With no choice, Prime tells everyone to flee while he destroys the key. Knowing that this will kill him, Noah refuses, but the leader tosses Bumblebee's insignia back to him, ordering his ally to protect the humans. Primal kneels before the Autobot, declaring that his sacrifice will be their oath. With that, Bumblebee takes the humans away, and Noah can only mourn as he looks back to Prime. Unicron looms over them, offering Prime everything he wants. The Autobot, however, wants him to die, so he stabs the key which explodes. This causes a vacuum that sends the Freezers and Predacons into space. Prime gets pulled in, but Noah and Primal return and grab him. The trio manages to escape before the tower is destroyed and sent into space. The portal closes, thus blocking Unicron's path to Earth. With that, the Autobots, Maximals, and humans regroup, savoring their victory. Primal notes that Unicron isn't dead, so he might return, but Prime declares that they can destroy him as long as they're united. Soon, the Autobots take the humans home, knowing that despite losing their chance to return to their planet, they've gained valuable allies against a greater evil. Noah eventually returns to his family, who welcome him warmly. One day, while waiting for a job interview, Noah sees Elena on the news as she gains recognition for discovering the underground temple in Peru. When he's called in for the interview, he meets Burke, who asks about his trip to Peru with the Autobots, surprising Noah. The man reveals that he's from a secret government organization specializing in global threats, and they want Noah and his friends to join their ongoing war. To convince him, he promises to give Chris the best healthcare. This is also to thank Noah for saving the world. With the man speechless, Burke opens a secret door on the wall, which reveals the organization hangar. When Noah checks the business card Burke gave him, he sees the organization name G.I. Joe. As he considers this offer, Noah returns home and fixes a car in Reek's garage. Reek doesn't think it will ever start, so the man calls on Mirage, who reveals himself, happy to be back in one piece. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.